How's it going everyone? Welcome back to SCC. Adam here. We're going to be doing the install on the rear wheel for the rear hub mounted adapters. Always make sure you have all the parts to your kit before you get started. I've always had to run to the local hardware store to get some kind of part because uh, they missed it or they put the wrong part in there. So in this case, uh, I kind of lined them up in order to the best I could. So you got your bolts, you got your chain wheel, you got one of your rubber adapters, and then your spokes will go right here. You have another rubber adapter on the back, your plates, your washers, your lock washers, and then your lock nuts coming in from the back. So we'll start, uh, start assembling this now, and uh, as I go on, I'll also show you the elapsed time as I'm installing to give an idea on how long this one takes. For either kit you're installing, you're going to have to remove the coaster brake arm. So it's basically just taking off uh, the nut right attached to it and then just pulling it right off. Now you're only taking off the coaster brake arm, so you can put the washer back on, keep that dust cap for the bearings on there, and then put this back on just to kind of keep everything somewhat together. Now with that brake arm out of the way, now we can get into the installing the first adapter. Okay everyone, so the kit on the left is what I'm going to be installing first. It's the normal uh, rear sprocket uh, pineapple adapter kit that comes in most engine kits, two-stroke or four-stroke. It's going to have a ton of pieces. It's actually going to be the first time that I ever installed it myself. So it's going to be a good gauge on time and how long it takes the first time uh, builder to install that kit. The kit on the right is the rear hub-mounted sprocket adapter, which you've heard me talk about a ton of times in a lot of my videos. It's going to be coming from Manic Mechanic in Florida. Uh, they're actually the first company to produce that adapter. So that's the adapter I've been using on all my builds ever since I first started a couple years ago. Same thing, we're going to test the time and then at the end we're going to compare to the durability, the ease of install, and also the versatility on it. So let's get right into it. Okay, so as you can see I got the sprocket the bolts and one rubber adapter on. Now I need a rubber adapter on the other side. So for that, you're going to have to make a cut right in between one of these holes so that way you can put it around the hub. Now when you put these when you put these plates on, you're going to lay them on top. Make sure that the seam in between the metal doesn't line up with the seam on the rubber adapter. So let's say you make a cut here, make sure you put the seam on the metal and offset it so it's a little bit more sturdy and it's not going to come apart uh, if your seams are lined up. Okay, now that I got the other rubber mount split, I can put it behind the spokes and around the rear hub. And now I can start the fun task of trying to line that adapter up with all the bolts. So it's going to be something you're just going to have to work with since the bolts are going in all different directions. You're going to have to really just work one at a time. Slowly work your way around the best you can.
Once you got that, you can rotate your wheel, kind of push all your bolts together if they would stay there. That would be awesome. All right. Now once that's done, you can take your metal brackets and then put those on the bolts behind. Once again, you're going to have to kind of play with it and line them up the best you can. It's kind of hard to uh, get your hands in between the spokes. Remember that where these come together, don't put that seam for the metal right over the seam on the rubber that you cut to go around the hub. Make sure those seams are staggered so it has a lot more uh, a lot more strength. So first of all, we're going to find the seam, which is going to be right on the top there. And then our first bracket, we're going to make sure this, the seam is going to be offset. And then the same thing, kind of work. You have to finagle the best you can. And then just work your way around with the other ones. Now as I go around here, I'm going to put the hardware on right away, loosely. That way as I'm turning it, my bracket doesn't fall off. Okay, so I got one metal bracket on the back, just uh, just a hardware through, just to hold it. So I got three bolts, the washers, lock washers, and the nuts holding it uh, there for the time being. And right now I'm at about 15 minutes uh, time since I first started installing. Now I'll go ahead and put the other two brackets on. So here's one of my first main concerns with this right off the bat. It, it's obviously not tight yet, but as you can see, on the hub it's not centered. So it has free motion to go all the way around. So how are you going to measure that and make sure it's absolutely perfectly dead center? There is no way. You can eyeball it and get it as close as possible, but if you mount that thing or it moves uh, from the pressure, uh, when you're riding and that chain pulling on it, you're going to have a wheel that's just sitting there flopping around and your chain's going to go from tight to loose, tight to loose. It, it's not, it's one of the main reasons that I don't mess around with these kits. Now another thing you don't want to do is you don't want to tighten one bolt up all the way and then go around and work your way around. It's just like the lug nuts on a, on a tire on a car. Tighten one down a little bit and then just go, so I do this one go across to this one and kind of on an X pattern all the way around evenly. Because if you tighten one down all the way, you're going to run into, if you can see it, so the sprocket's going to be at an angle. So that's another thing that you're really going to have to be careful with is uh, after you tighten them all down to make sure that there is no angle on it. Otherwise that's going to really throw your chain alignment off and you're going to run into potentially uh, having your chain come off because it's not seated on, seated on there uh, correctly. So I'm at about a half hour right now for install time. And this is after I already had the wheel off the bike and I'm still not done. So I still, every time I tighten it, this thing keeps on going off center. So I'm going to get to a point sooner or later where it's too tight to move, so I'm going to have to loosen it back up, recenter it. This is absolutely one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in my life. This is a huge pain in the ass. And then also, if you look at it from this angle, you're going to see that it's still not in line. And by the time I do get this tight, I'm going to have little to no clearance from the chain to the engine to clear my tire. And keep in mind that I also have a rear fender on here too, which is a little bit wider than the tire. There's no way in hell that chain is going to clear if I use this wheel. So I'm not even going to sit here and mess around with uh, continuing to tighten this up and get it right because I'll be at it another 10 or 20 minutes and chances are it's still not going to be the way it's supposed to be because there's no set way to do this correctly. So I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to show you what the Manic Mechanic rear hub mounted adapter can do. Okay, now for my favorite part. So for the Manic Mechanic rear hub mounted sprocket adapter, number one, they include all the tools you need. And now let's see how simple and quick it is to install. Okay, three main pieces, five bolts for the entire thing. So these two pieces right here are gonna go, to, go together and go right over the hub. 
So let's put this on and see how quick it is. Okay, so you got two bolts that hold the two pieces that go around the hub on. So don't tighten them all the way because you're going to need to adjust it afterwards. Okay, so we got the chain wheel on. Now it's just a matter of tightening all the bolts. So one of the first things I want you to notice is that you don't have to worry about the center on this because it goes around the hub and the way it's designed, it's automatically going to center. So you don't have to mess around with it like the old ones. Uh, I'm well under five minutes. I'm actually just, uh, just over three and a half minutes for install on this. And then another main thing that's going to be a huge plus with this is one thing that the other one didn't allow you uh, to do anything with is your chain alignment. So, okay, let's say you need to align your chain. You can move this laterally. So all you have to do, once you loosen it up, is you can move this. You have a good amount of play to line your chain up. So if you need to clear a wheel or a fender, you can move it out. And if you don't need that much space, you can move it back in. You probably have a good 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch play laterally. So now that's going to guarantee that you have proper chain alignment and it's going to be center. Okay, so let's do a little recap. So the first adapter that I used was going to be the one that attaches to the spokes that's included in most uh, engine kits you get from online. I had almost 40 minutes invested into it just for the install, and you still can get the alignment right on it, both uh, around the hub and uh, for chain alignment. And there's no way to adjust it. So imagine uh, I'd say a good hour from the time you take your wheel off to the time you mess around with that thing. Let's say you break a spoke. You're going to have at least an hour to sit there and fiddle around with that thing. To me, I, I just I don't see it being worth it. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments probably saying that people have used that for years and works just fine. I, I, I don't see it. Uh, if it works great for you, that's awesome. But as you can see with the Manic Mechanic, I installed that in well under five minutes. You have your lateral adjustment. You can replace your spokes without even touching the chain wheel. So uh, it's going to save you a lot of time. Shipped to your door. It's well under $100. Uh, you're looking, depending on the size, depending on the adapter, uh, I think they're about $90, bucks, give or take a few bucks. Well worth it. If you only upgrade one part, get this adapter, it's going to save you a lot of time. Uh, I believe they come in four sizes, anywhere from 36 tooth up to 44 tooth, like what I have on this hub. Uh, the bigger size chain wheel you go with, the more low end torque you're going to have, the uh, lower top speed you're going to have. With the smaller wheel, you're going to have higher top speed, but lower torque. Uh, so on both these builds, I'm, I have one 36 tooth, and I have one 44 tooth. I'll be doing a comparison as far as top speed and torque, hill climbing power, things like that in upcoming videos. So, hope you liked the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please, 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 I can't stress this, this enough. Please subscribe. Uh, share this video, please. If you like this video, if you like what I do, share and like the videos. Comment, you can get a hold of me at sinistercustomcycles at gmail.com or facebook.com forward slash scc. M -M. Uh, a lot more videos to come, also the giveaway coming up in about a month or two, and then uh, I'm also going to be starting up another channel here in about another month or two at the most. So stay tuned for that. Huge shout out to Matt Mechanic uh, for the Sprocket Adapter, uh, and you can check out that the rear hub mounted Sprocket Adapters and a lot of other parts that he has. Uh, at mmbikeparts.com. Excellent service, fast shipping. I remember a couple years ago when I got in motorized biking, I talked to him on the phone. He walked me through everything. Just great people there, great service. Uh, so check their site out, mmbikeparts.com. And uh, yeah, see what they have to offer. And I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Thank you very much. And uh, keep an eye out for the next video. It should be another, about another week or two. So right before Thanksgiving. Thanks a lot, guys.